Hi, welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are happy to be here today. This podcast is airing Monday, April 5th, 2021. First podcast in April. It's April. Yes. <laughs> couple days before April. Just Yeah, we're just a couple days early again. So we actually just released the final podcast in March this week. So, yes. And Chelsea did an Instagram post and got some fun new questions. Yeah, I'm so grateful. That was uh, yeah. really fun. I just thought, let's ask some questions on Instagram. And so many of you uh, had so many great ones. So yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yes, yeah, so we're excited. Uh, but we will begin and let Chelsea talk about the quilt on the wall and the quilt on the table. I'm so excited because <laughs> I actually got a couple quilts done. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm celebrating that. Uh, the quilt on the wall today is called Cross My Heart and just a cute little cross with a heart in it block. And this one is fat eighth friendly. Uh, if you decide to do a low volume in the hearts, uh, my pattern is does have, you know, requires a little yardage for doing a separate uh, print inside the hearts. But yeah, so fat eighth, fat eighth friendly. Uh, this one's so much fun to, to make. It's just 61 and a half by 61 and a half. Uh, oh, it's square. Oh, is it square? Is it square? Or No, oh my goodness, it's oh. not. Okay. Is this one square? Maybe you're thinking no, of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. I actually think I'm off on this one. I think I put it wrong. Okay. It's not square, guys. Okay. Thank you, mother. <laughs> okay, I was just wondering. Uh, no, it's, it's not. It's so cute. Uh, yes, I really love this one. Marion did the quilting on this. She did like little swirls with hearts in it. Can you see like the little hidden hearts? Yeah. So fun. I really, really love this one. Really cute. Uh, and then the quilt on the table, I'm really excited about this one too, because, uh, it's actually a boxed kit with Moda as well, but it's called good hearted. Uh, it's kind of has a scrappy vibe, uh, to it, which I love. It's layer cake friendly, love a good layer quick cake quilt and you'll use some yardage as well so this one's fun marion quilted this one as well it wow. turned out super cute and is this the one that you had the kids with their hands and yes their hearts yeah picture? that is so sweet so i actually uh was just stumped sometimes i think too much about placement even if i have the digital image printed out uh -huh. and yeah i had my daughter and her friends were over and i said you want to know what they're not supposed to be matching. I want you guys to pick, you know, different pairings. And they did great. Like, yeah. honestly, they did such a good job. So yeah. that was really, really fun. I got to involve them. And yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, we will have these linked uh, below the YouTube and in the show notes. And so... Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited and I'm still sewing more. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm working on two others at the same time. This past week was a little jumbled. So mom, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was supposed to take one of my mom's quilts in and I'm going to this week unless she has already taken it in. No, nope, so. it's still here. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm still waiting for you. But no, so, bring yeah. me these when you get the bindings yeah. put on and I'll bind them for you. You guys, if you're, if you're not, if you can't see on YouTube or if you're listening in, I don't have binding on these yet, but mom has so graciously <laughs> offered her services to me. Yeah. So yes, mom, I will bring those and pick up your quilt and take them to Marion this week. So. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And we do have one more quilt behind Chelsea on the yes. ladder. That is the together quilt. And that is actually going to be the stitch pink 2021 quilt along quilt. And I got it done since our last podcast, and it is also quilted by Marion, and it, <laughs> it also has a really cute little heart in it that's different from, she always makes sure not to do the same pattern on yeah. our quilts. So it's super uh, cute, and there will be weekly videos in October, step-by-step -step how to make it, Yeah, and a lot of shops will be selling kits, so um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about this for It'll be uh, fun. that. It's going to be a lot of fun and fun to sew something together as a community. So yes, we're really, really excited <laughs> about all these. <laughs> okay, so we thought uh, 
we just kind of start off with kind of a review of what we did in March, what, what went well, things that didn't quite get done, and then kind of a preview what we plan for April. And I'll just go first and <laughs> let Chelsea go after that. But in March, I will say I think we both just sewed quilts with Sincerely yeah. Yours pretty much. That's what I was going to say. So uh, everything that we got done was a win. Anything that is still in progress will get done soon, right? Yeah. Gonna I'm just going to have the positive. You can speak for me. <laughs> okay. This is exactly how my life has been going lately. Okay. And then April preview, we both have some quilts that we're going to be working on in April. And I'm really excited about that those. That we're very excited about. Yes. Yeah. Can't oh, share those. But can't share them. We're excited. It'll be a while. But also just a happy days update. I think we updated you. Oh, no. Last I don't know time. if I know this update. I, I, so I don't, I don't know if I gave the most recent update on the most recent podcast, but supposedly... No, I don't think you did okay. on the last one. Okay. Billy's anything. like, dun, dun, dun. Okay, so Happy Days Yardage is still on schedule to ship any time. Okay. At, at the yardage, the bolt fabrics on the bolts. Okay. But the pre-cuts, I heard last week that oh. they may not ship till May. Oh, my goodness. So that is your layer cakes, jelly rolls... Yeah. Factory, fat quarter bundles, charm packs, mini charms. I'm thinking the pre-cut hexagons. Yeah, the shipping can get a little tricky yeah. these days. I just hope it's not on a ship in the Suez Canal. I know. <laughs> that, I, that ship did get loose. So I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. know where they are, but I know yeah. they do come by ship. The yard, it, but I mean, it is good that the yardage is shipping. Yes, yes. Yeah, so. Praying that those pre-cuts can get here soon. Right. And, so yeah. Yep. Thank you for the update, Mom. So, so I needed the update. It, is okay. April gonna be overall less busy for the both of you? Or I is it gonna be the so. same? I think so because the things that we're gonna be working on in April, I feel like we have until <laughs> partially into May to get them done. Yes. Right? Yeah, but they have to be done before June. So yeah. my mindset but some of them are smaller projects. Yeah, most of mine are small. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a little less busy. This okay. is the thing. For me. Well, just to give the <laughs> listeners a behind-the-scenes look, because I'm a, a behind-the-scenes a little bit, listening and seeing everything they're working on, I felt like you guys were pretty, <laughs> like, pushed to the limit in March, both I, of you. Yeah. you got, at least when I've Thank been around. Thank you, Billy. So, Thank you. Just Thank to give you. the listeners, yes. yeah, they've been working hard, I guess. and Billy, yeah. you can see it. Great. Yeah. I was hoping it would be less busy for you in April. Yeah. Honestly, yes, I think so. That is so true. Thank uh, you for noticing. Thank you. You're so kind. You're too yeah. kind. <laughs> no, I I have a couple things that are going to be published in October. And yeah. at the same time, they both had edits and writing and yeah. on top of all the sewing. And it's just been March was really busy. It was really, really busy. And I can agree and I actually can agree with the April. It's, it's, I still have work to do. Like right. there's still quilts. I, but honestly, I'm getting, I honestly feel less stressed. I got a, a lot done today. I do. I feel like yeah. my mind is more at ease just right. because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not stressed now. I was actually right. going to tell you that when I got here, I'm feeling, I'm feeling so good. You guys, like <laughs> good. I'm on top of it. <laughs> good. My sewing room is like clean projects are laid out like I have yeah. motivation right so I'm feeling really good oh good I did some cleaning in my sewing room Saturday good too. for you even a little bit in the closet so <gasps> what yeah. that's so. my territory <laughs> for you yeah wow so, Mom. and w we've been remodeling two bathrooms one because there was a leak and the that other has one has been crazy for you yeah but the one that there wasn't a problem with is almost done thankfully and yeah. then it'll just be and and we are almost to the putting the tile back in and the one that had the problem. So yeah, and that's I getting better say, too. And I must say, you guys, mom showed me the shower that's basically <laughs> done. And I just like, I I looked at her and I'm like, can I stand in it? Because it's so clean and so pretty and no one showered in it yet. Yeah. And I just stood there and I'm like, oh, this is so nice. So yeah, it's well, beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun picking <laughs> well, out the tile. Thank you. It was kind of like picking out fabric for a quilt, you know. So, so true. Yeah. So true. Okay, should we move on to the 
Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Instagram questions. Instagram today. questions today. Instagram session yes. questions. Chelsea's Instagram. My session. Instagram. Yes. These are my people. I have this <laughs> joke with my husband. Uh, I'll be on my phone. He'll be like, are you talking to the people? And I'm like, I am talking to the people. I, I love my little quilting community yeah, so much. So awesome. I've made a lot of good friends and yeah, good support there. Awesome. Okay. So let's start it off. Okay. What is your favorite quilt block size to design slash make and why? And I actually found this to be super interesting. This is a friend of mine. Her name's Gracie. Okay. Uh, she's a designer for Rally Blake. So I was really appreciative of her questions and her perspective. Uh-huh. Uh, but I do. I don't generally go for a smaller block size. And what's funny is both of these quilts are a little bit smaller block size. They're a little bit smaller than from, you usually make. From what I normally do. And normally yeah. it's like... I, I mean, guys, I love a good 18, 20 inch, 24 inch block. Like I love doing a nine block quilt. That's yeah. like huge. Uh, I, I'm going to say bigger quilt blocks. Mm. I like designing a, a bigger quilt block. Huh. That's so interesting. I would probably say nine inch, eight or nine inch is my favorite size. <laughs> so, and I feel like that's kind of what, where the range these are in. Yeah. Fairly close. So fairly close to that. So yeah, I I think and I and I love the six inch blocks and I you have, do yeah and I've absolutely been loving the three inch social your, lights. Your social lights are kind of like freaking me out. I'm like, how do you so, do that? They're so fun. I'm, She's totally starching, guys. Uh, yes, but yeah, I feel like I do like a little bit smaller blocks. But every once in a while, like you said, like a good eighteen inch, yeah, sixteen to eighteen inch is fun every once in a while. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. Fun that was question. A good question. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess did we say why? Because she said why. To why me, do you in like? in my mind, it's less blocks. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I can get this huge quilt done faster. Done faster with bigger fewer. blocks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think that's my mindset. Yeah. And maybe it's because I like the smaller ones because maybe it makes the quilt more scrappy. Oh, true. Yeah. So I could see that. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You guys both learned it, I think, just, just right now. Yeah, we just figured learned it out. something. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> We're learning so much about ourselves. Yeah. So, okay. Awesome question. Number two, what design software do you both use to design your blocks and quilts? And we both use EQ8, right? Oh, you have seven still? I think I still have seven. I have eight. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, you're cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but regardless, but EQ, EQ is awesome. Yes. I think we both love that program. Really love it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just love it. There was actually a question on here. I don't think I put it in. <gasps> I do have EQ8. It was somebody who asked another question about that, and I think they wanted to know if we just use the yardages from the pattern, from the program, and I don't. I don't. I, f I do the math myself, even though the program gives it to me. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I feel like that's, I have to do it myself, or yeah. else I'm just like double guessing like yeah. everything in my head. I'm like, no, it helps to, especially since we're you know, writing the patterns for them and everything. Like we're right. figuring out all of the yardages for yeah. the patterns. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I always do the math myself. The, on the only time I thought it was interesting though, for this together quilt, I did double check it because I was so nervous about getting that just right. And yeah, I, Natalie went over it and I went over it and then yeah. I did sneak a peek at what EQ said and I was I was pleasantly surprised that it was very accurate yeah. so thank goodness but, for the dream team so <laughs> Natalie is wonderful yes and her husband I Joel <laughs> yeah they did on that they did really cute little hearts on the page numbers. Oh, are you serious and little hearts in between the what? steps it's really adorable they're so awesome <laughs> So, okay, so that's it for the design software. Okay. Oh, somebody, one of my friends asked me this, Kim. Um, but this is somebody else's question. How many quilts is too many? Can one justify having a cupboard full just at home? Is it a sustainable hobby? 
And my friend, who our kids are like the same age as they play all the time, uh-huh. she's like, where do you, like, what do you do with them all? Like, what, why do you keep making them? They just keep piling up. You guys, there's never enough. Really, though, like, I have seasonal quilts. Right. So I'm switching them out all the time. I love it. I love, right. you know, and I don't have a, a fraction of what you have, but I just, I love all my quilts. I can't part with one right now. I'm just not there yet. Yeah. I love them all. So for me right now, too many, there's never too many quilts. Right. Um, and I do, guys. I have a cupboard full of quilts <laughs> now because I bought that one armor cupboard thing. Yeah, and so pretty. I love it. I store all my holiday quilts in there. So, yeah. yeah. I agree. I don't think any number of quilts is too many because you can change them out seasonally because you don't want quilts that might be displayed in full sunlight to be out all the time yes, and get damaged. Yes, is a big one. You right? want to protect them. Yeah. And so I also feel like when you have quilting for a business, you sometimes need to do trunk shows and, mm-hmm. you know, those will all come back again. We'll be doing in-person events and we'll need to take our quilts with us to tell part of our story and to share the patterns. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But that, that was being, a great question though. Yeah. That being said, I am getting ready to sell some because I, I just, you need I do to. have some. You've done so many books and books stuff. And, that, yeah. So. Yeah. And I love giving them away too. So. Yeah. Uh, I, it's fun to be able to, when you hear about somebody that has a need to be able to have something that you can give them. It's yeah. It's ready to go. So. Yeah. And that moves right into the next question. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <gasps> Take it away, mom. Okay. What is your go-to pattern when you need a quick and easy (laughs) quilt for a gift? (sighs) What do you think? Do you want me to go first? You go first because you've gifted and made a lot more. Okay. So, uh, and I've given Chelsea one of these and my other daughter, but just a layer cake with the squares sewn together. Yes. I made that little quilt for Finn. Yeah. And... Uh, that is the greatest way. You know, there are 42 10 inch squares. You do six rows by seven rows. You put a border or don't put a border. That's that's my go to yeah. for something like that. That being said, I probably don't give bigger quilts as much as I give table runners. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I've got two table runner patterns that I like. They're both by Atkinson Designs and they are. Uh, I might have to pop up the, oh, Mini Brick, Mini Brick Road, and the newest one is called Cha Cha Cha, and I've made half a dozen of both of those patterns. And, oh my goodness! Yeah, so planning um, on those for Christmas next year. Well, and um, <laughs> I believe what that the one time I was living with my friend's parents in college. Yes. For a brief time, you sent up a table runner. I did. And I saw her this summer. I saw my friend's mom this summer, uh-huh. and she mentioned it. Really? And that oh would have been goodness. like 2008. So that's yeah. Well, yeah, that's like 13 years ago, right? Holy yes. cow. And, that's right. <laughs> and I bet I know the pattern I used back then because there was a Heather Mulder Peterson table runner pattern I was making back then. I probably made 20 four to 36 of them <laughs> and i gave them to everybody so i'm betting yeah. that's the pattern she has yeah so oh when you said that i remembered it and yeah. i believe the quilt now that i'm learning the terminology i think the quilt you made me was the a layer cake quilt right just squares um, or is or, or am i look am i thinking about the wrong quilt is actually the predecessor to the four square pattern oh yeah so really yeah it's a Oh, okay. Your, your the quilt I made that you're talking about was a Moda Bake Shop tutorial a long oh. time ago. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> but so yeah. sorry, Chelsea. I know you, you were going to say yours. Oh wait. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say real quick. Mom has a pattern. Uh, you released it with Desert Bloom, Baby Baby. Yes. And if you are thinking of a baby quilt, that one's adorable. I've made um. I made one, but I have the one you uh-huh. gave, you gifted it to Finn. Oh, that's right. That as well. Right. Uh, but that's a great pattern if you're thinking of gifting to a baby, I was right. going to say. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Um, I've actually been wanting to just make a few baby quilts just to have on hand. Yes. So. Yeah, totally. I think actually that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you always cut out all the pieces for a quilt before you start? Um, always, except there are certain times where you may want to wait on your borders um, just to double check and like lay the fabrics right next to the edge of the quilt. Uh, but most of the time I cut everything out so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. And it's so funny because I don't. Most of the time I don't. It's the rare occasion when I do. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I always make a test block first before I cut anything else out. Um, but I rarely do that. And But when I do do it, I'm always grateful that I did. Yeah. So I know why you do it. Yeah. I just feel like get all my cut. Like I'm cutting out multiple quilts in one day. So I'm just like, let's get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. I love to just sew. Mm -hmm. That is just my golden hour. Like, I love it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, most of the time I'm always cutting everything out. Because see, when normally I'm just making quilts that I'm already designing digitally in EQ. So I know kind of what. Right. But, you know, it's different when you have the fabrics in person. So I can see why. Right. You know. But it's interesting. I'm I'm making a quilt right now. It's a star quilt, but in the center, it has a patchwork section. And I actually cut out and made all the patchwork sections. Oh. And now I'm to the point where I have to make all the flying geese for the star. And so uh, I have to still cut that out before I can move forward. So it would have been nice if I'd already cut it out. It's just giving me a panic attack right now. (laughs) So (laughs) I cannot even fathom this. Yeah. (laughs) So, but yeah, generally I think it's best after you've made a test block, to just go ahead and cut the whole thing out. Yeah. And I do try to make bindings ahead of time. I have... See that I'm terrible at. Yeah. I have two table runners at the quilter right now, and I already have the binding done. So um, as soon as I get those back, I can just yeah just get that binding stitched on. You are a so. speedy binder, Mom. <laughs> And those, Gail uh, Begay is quilting those for me. And she oh, just. Oh, fun. Yeah, she lives pretty close. So yeah. I can just run over and. Yeah, pick she's them right up. up the road. Yep. So, okay. Number six. Yes. Is that where we're at? Okay. Yeah. I am new to quilting and wondered what you meant when you speak of tone on tone fabric. Great question. Perfect question. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If this is visible, did you use the... I I didn't, but in this one I did, but it's so hard to see because of the lighting. Okay. So tone on tone is just when there might be a design on top of a solid fabric and the design and the solid fabric background are the same color. Like this has some large uh, creamy white polka dots on top of a creamy white background. And you can't... Really Okay, so the best way for me to describe it is when I'm designing a tone-on-tone print in Illustrator, I'm putting the cream color background, Mm -hmm. and then the design, I'm taking that exact same shade, and I'm giving it just a smidge of a darker hue. Okay. Because when you look at the tone-on-tone fabrics in the light is when you can really tell when you move it. Uh, It gives the, the background more texture is what it does right and so you can subtly see this design that has the design in basically the same color as its background right uh and you can barely see it but you it makes a difference right and so it gives you that texture without um really you know it doesn't have a bold design on it you know or different colors so it's tone on tone it's basically the same tone on top of the same tone uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's interesting to me. I didn't know that you put like the hue a little bit tiny, yeah. bit darker in the yeah. in the Illustrator. That's it's in the same colorway. I'm just literally taking that shade a smidge darker. Okay. And then that's how I submit okay. that. So yeah, yeah. And all of our collections have a tone on tone print, whether it's flowers or polka dots or mm-hmm. dots or and a lot of other designers do that too. So. Yeah. I know Corey Yoder does a tone on tone with every collection. I think Vanessa Gertzen oh, yeah. does too. And yeah. Bonnie and Camille. 
I think they're different shades, right. but yeah, every, most of, most of the designers I know have tone on tones, right? Because instead of just buying, you know, we love our Bella ivory or we used porcelain with this line. Uh, but it helps to have a printed tone on tone print uh, for your collection. It's such a great addition to your stash. Like, yes. It's awesome. And I feel like it's a, always a perfect match to the yeah. collection, too. Sometimes the Bella is slight, slightly, slightly, slightly different. Yeah. Because yeah. when the strike offs come, you know, there are variations. Right. So, but yeah, we love them. Hopefully yes. that helps answer your question. <laughs> yeah. That was a great question. Okay. Number seven. When are you stumped for an idea and what do you do to bring in inspiration? This is a great question. Yes. I take a break <laughs> is my greatest bit of advice. Uh, sometimes it's just stop, Chelsea, go to bed and wake up and try creating again. And most of the time, that's it. I'm just tired. It's been a long day. Right. I'm just not feeling it that day. Uh, sometimes it's a week. Not going to lie. But that's what I do. I just take a break yeah. and that's what it takes. So... That's good. But everyone's so different because we're all so different. Like, I can't pinpoint for anyone else what your creative block is. Right. Uh, like, I'll tell mom, I don't just work a little bit on a fabric line for eight weeks. I, most of the time, I do it in a few days mm -hmm. because I sit there and I am so driven right. with what I have going. It just, and with quilting, just little by little and... So yeah, everyone's is different. Yeah. No, um, I feel like for me, I will clean or organize and that will kind of get me so out of a slump. True. Yeah, that's yeah. my probably number one go to. And then number two is to make a list or kind of brainstorm just. Yeah. And sometimes that involves looking at something that's completely unrelated to quilting too. Like yeah, totally. Home decor or... Yeah. Maybe sit down and read a book. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. that's, you need a change of pace. Right. Just a change. Yeah. Of... Not one creative person is just constantly creative. Right. Like we all have a block. Right. Uh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I clean. Yeah. I'll go like, I'll go exercise one day or something. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and I always keep a pen and paper handy when I'm doing that because sometimes I'll get ideas when I'm not trying to get ideas, when I'm trying to yes. get over that that block, whatever it is, and so I will need to have that pen and paper, yeah, ready to to write things that come to me. So. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Okay, this next one, we both thought. I don't think anyone has asked this before. Nobody has. Okay. Such a good question. Good question. What is your process for choosing binding fabric? Often I use the same fabric as my outermost border, but not all my quilts have borders. In this case, is a solid the way to go? And have you ever ripped the binding out oh. to redo it? I thought that oh. was, yeah. So. Kate, I thought this question was so great because last week mom had a quilt. Actually, it might be your the one behind you. Uh, but the binding was the same color as the backing when I looked at it and oh, I was right. like whoa why are two of the same color touching why is this happening uh it's not what I would do normally I pick something that now most of the time I have an outer uh border background border and so I just choose something that complements one of the blocks in the quilt mm -hmm. um which most of the time is any color you know more of your quilts just have white Yes. Or tone on tone yeah. borders around most, the edges. Most of them. Yeah, right? most of them. Because yeah. I cannot, my brain is like, it needs more space, <laughs> more space, like all the time. Yeah. But yeah, when I saw yours, I was so intrigued, but I loved it. I'm like, wow, that's so cool that the same color is touching. So when she said in her question, right, you know, I sometimes use the same fabric as the outermost border. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Right. I loved that. Yeah. I thought that was nice. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I have a few different ideas. I, I usually do have colored borders. You do. Most of the majority. And so then I will. I'll pick up a, a color from that border that is maybe on the darker side so that it kind of frames it yeah. and is a darker. Uh, sometimes I will match it to the backing. And then if I have a 
a tone on tone light outer border, then it's just really fun to pick one of the yeah. prints from the quilt and frame it with that. So yeah, those are kind of the three ways I go with that. So now the last the question, last part of that question, have you ever ripped the binding out to redo it? I I never have had to do that. No. But I just cannot imagine like all the tiny threads sticking out like, oh, guys, <laughs> I haven't had to experience that yet. Um, I yeah. did it one time and it was a nightmare, but I, oh. I just, I made a bad choice and I had that binding on the quilt. Yeah. And this has, it's been at least 10 years because I'm picturing where we lived when I did it and... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a while, but it, yeah. And now I'm super paranoid, I guess, about that. I'm choosing the right binding my, the people who quilt for me will attest. I will often ask them, Hey, what would you bind this? I mean, cause you yeah. know, they've just been looking at it for hours and hours while oh, they were yeah. quilting it. They're the best people to ask. Yes. So I, I'll often ask Marion or Val just to kind of double check myself. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask my husband to come in and what do you think? You know, I'll lay out different choices because I never want to have to pick out another binding. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just can't imagine like, so, I feel yeah. like my mindset would be like, eh, I'm going to leave it. Yeah. Like, even if I don't love it, right. I, I don't know. I just can't. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I remember I was really happy I changed it. It was that bad. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. It was really bad. Just the wrong choice. I can't imagine you like, making yeah. that wrong choice. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Ooh. Any, I feel like we kind of talked about this last time. Any tips on cleaning your own sewing machine? Yeah. And I was excited for this one because I actually had a good friend ask me about this. Well, actually, she oh. texted me one day and said, can you film a video about how to clean my machine? I don't know what to do. And so Billy and I filmed a video and we have that video and put it up on the YouTube channel. And she texted me the next day. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's exactly what I wanted to know. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, we will link to that video. That's awesome. And yeah, I, ba my basic formula though is after after I've emptied every five bobbins, I will clean the lint out of the bottom of the machine. Yeah. Put a drop of oil in and put a new needle in. So, that's so smart. Sometimes I forget about the needle because I'm busy, but I have a good friend. She puts a new needle in with every project. And oh, really? Yeah. What? Yeah. So. Wow. Hmm. Some ideas for That is there. a happy machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we both love number 10. This, guys, <laughs> when you ask us a question about food, you have become my favorite person. Yes. And now I'm hungry again. Yeah. So I am so glad to be answering this. Okay. So it says... What is your go-to drink and must snack while doing a long sewing day or weekend? Uh, sour punch straws. Really? Are, oh, yes. Are 100% my favorite snack oh. ever. Uh, I get the bites. I don't do... Actually, yeah, I do the sour punch bites. I don't do the straws because they're oh. a little more inconvenient. Can you buy those at Lynn's? Outfit? Yes, mom. Okay, oh my I goodness. Need to get some. <laughs> they are, don't get the green apple or the blueberry. Okay. Get, I think it's the fruit punch or the strawberry. <laughs> okay. Can't remember. It's the pink bag. Okay. Just go for pink. Okay. okay. Um, it is so good. And then my other favorite one that's like, I have to wash my hands. So like, I'm really careful not to like eat food, like, and be touching my quilts and fabrics and stuff. But the smart food white cheddar popcorn. Oh. oh my goodness. You can get that at Lynn's too, by oh, the way. Wow. So you might be taking a shopping trip. Uh those are normally the snacks that I have on hand. Oh. Uh if my children are around, I have like goldfish. I'm such a kid. Like I just like huh. all those snacks. But um those are my three favorite snacks. Wow. And then uh for a drink, I'm not really like a soda drinker. Um, so I don't know what I'd say on drink. I always have those big like tumbler cups though. And I fill it with ice and water. I uh -huh. love just having that. So, huh. but yeah, yeah, sour punch for sure, guys. I wrote it down. Billy, you had some popcorn out here. 
the other oh week my goodness. on the counter. It was really good. His popcorn was so good. What, what was Where that? Where did you buy it? <laughs> um, it is, I, I do all my grocery shopping at Sprouts, so this podcast is not sponsored by Sprouts, <laughs> but... Okay. That's where I get all my food because it keeps you, if you go, if I, I feel like it's cheaper than Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, but yeah. also you just don't get bombarded with candy and soda and oh, all this. it's just there, but they do have good organic popcorn. It's just like lightly sea salted and that's what that was. And I get like, I eat too much of that though. Yeah. If, 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 if I was to channel, have a uh, Billy McConnell, yeah, if I was to have a, a snack, it would be that. It would be that, that popcorn. I feel like you good. need to bring us a bag next time yeah, you come. Please, so, uh, I yeah. can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, for my snack, uh, I know yours. I think. Well, I love these dark chocolate sea salt caramels from Costco. From Costco. Yep, they yeah. have milk chocolate too, but I love the dark chocolates. I was introduced to those at Quilt Market. Carrie. Yeah, Carrie said she showed it to us and they were like behind the curtain somewhere. Yes. Now, you guys, I must explain the secret room at Quilt Market. Yeah, okay. I don't know if we should talk oh, about Oh, we can't talk. Okay. Let's just say there is a hidden stash of snacks. Hypothetically, there is a hidden stash of snacks that the Moda designers often sneak into. <laughs> yes. Uh, when we're very tired and we grab a snack from the secret stash. Yes. It's hard to find, guys. It's yeah. very well hidden. Yes. And that's where I was introduced to those and I yes. love them. Carrie was like, just a heads up, y'all. Yeah. This is what we got going on here in the snack stash. Right. And then to drink, I'm usually a water person. Same but here. I don't know. Since the pandemic, I've been mixing <laughs> Mom. Uh, mango. <laughs> uh lemonade and like mango nectar you get them both at costco and i'll do like two-thirds of the mango nectar and one-third lemonade okay and ice oh that sounds so yummy really good really fresh yeah that sounds super yummy yeah and sometimes we put a little bit of ginger ale in with it to give it a little bit of a sparkle give it a little zest yeah you know anyway look at you yeah just over here (laughs) mix and drink (laughs) So anyway, that's our uh, non-alcoholic drink <laughs> of the of the pandemic. So, oh my goodness, yeah. Okay, so I did just want to uh, share. This was also in the comment section. Uh, just really quick, somebody had the sweetest comment. Uh, so I'm going to share it right now. It wasn't a question, but it just kind of made me laugh because it. Here, I'll read it first. Okay. Okay. Blue Spool Sewing Room says, I don't have a question at the moment, but wanted to tell you how much I appreciate your videos for the podcast on YouTube. I am enjoying listening in while I sew, and your brother cracks me up when he randomly chimes in. (laughs) The family vibe is easy for me to relate to, and I love how it feels like we all just sit down and chat. And I loved that so much because when I watch the YouTube videos after they release and I see all the comments, so many people comment about Billy. Yeah, that's true. And I, and I told Billy one time, I'm like, do you know how many people like are so happy? Like you're a part of this and that like Billy made a slight appearance. He held up like a tiny quilt one time right. and the comments were like, there he is. We saw him and we need more Billy. Yeah. And it's just so sweet because he really is the backbone. So he yeah. does a lot for us. And so I thought that comment was was really sweet. I love that. If you're a shop owner, the plan is for Billy to be at the next quilt market. Yeah. Because I, I was going to have him there at the one that got Pittsburgh. to Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that was the plan. I was hoping that we would have had, you know, a good portion of our family there at that market. And then it all got shut down. But yeah. hopefully the next quilt market, it will work out and Billy will be there as well. He can yeah. film some stuff for us. And visit with you all yes. if you're there, if you're a shop owner. And <laughs> so, I'm sure he's yeah. sitting here like, All right, I really? guess so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like they're planning like, like, his whole fan club ready. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do, Chelsea, I do not have a, there's I no know, fan club. I know. <laughs> so, I'm calm just, me down a little bit. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's sweet 
they care about you. Well, yes. th- th- thank you. I do appreciate it. I, I try to like, um, I don't like a lot of, of attention. I try I to know you don't. move away from that, but thank you. Yeah. Yes, it'll, it'll be good. So. Oh my goodness. Those were great questions. Great and, questions. Yeah. Uh, don't fret if we didn't get to them today. Right. Uh, we'll, we have so many more from the comment yeah. section that we'll be going over on the next one. Right. So, And our next episode will be on Monday, April 19th. 2021 Yay. and we are still planning on the live stream that following saturday the 24th yes so that's the plan for april mm-hmm. and yeah, we, there were some comments on the last episode that people are looking forward to the, oh, the awesome. live stream oh so, good yeah awesome fun. we plan to have a, a fun trunk show for that so mm-hmm. So I guess maybe the, so April 24th will be the, the day and then we will release the exact time on the next podcast yeah, on, on April the next. 19th oh, okay. yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that they know exactly what time to tune right. in. And yeah. I'm sure you guys yeah. will post on your social media and right. everything like that too. Yes. And then I believe you can watch it after anyway, but if you yeah, want to be on it there. while it's mm-hmm. live. Yeah. If you want live questions right. and everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, is there anything yeah, else? Yeah, do for you today? have a review for us today? Yep, I can do that. If we want I kind of I kind of already did one, but Yeah. We'll save it for next yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. We'll so we'll have more reviews for next time. We'll, okay. We're slowly getting caught up on those and we appreciate them so much. Yeah. But really thank you for everyone who commented and on that Instagram post and we appreciate the uh questions so much. Yes. And Thank, yeah. Thanks so much for stopping by. 